All right. Uh, thanks go out to my viewers and especially my uh, my uh, patrons. Um, they give me enough money to buy things so I can put on them, uh, get them put on the channel. And so I decided to buy this thing. And it is a power meter. It says it's a frequency and power meter. And it's a cute little thing. It's real small. And the interesting thing about this is it's supposed to be able to be good for 50 watts, <laughs> which is pretty crazy. But I like the form factor. And I'm, and I'm thinking maybe it's a good addition to, you know, the, all those small, uh, small uh, devices that we have now. Um, and so I thought we'd take a look at it. So it comes with um, it comes with a little rubber duck antenna, and so you can get near a transmitter and measure the frequency. Um, the little antenna says UHF 400 to 470 megahertz, so it's a 220. That'd be interesting. Maybe measure the uh, maybe measure the antenna on uh, on the VNA someday. Um, anyway, so that's and it comes with a couple adapters. Uh, so uh, let me unscrew it in. So it comes with a, a male SMA, and, and uh, so you need to be able to get things into it with a male SMA if you want to measure power. So it does come with one adapter. Uh, it comes with this adapter that you can put on, and then you have BNC. It also comes with a little cable uh, that you can screw in. And uh, let's do that. Let's screw it in. And then you can hook it up to other things and measure the power. So let's turn it on. It takes uh, three AAA batteries. Let me show that. Uh, just uh, three, three AAAs in the bottom. Uh, oops, there we go. So it turns on and it's just kind of giving random numbers for frequency, 265, whatever that is. So I have my Baofeng. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and screw it on. Unfortunately, this, I have to turn the radio to screw it on. There we go. Okay, and it's set to uh, APRS, so it should be transmitting at 144.395. And so let's go ahead and transmit. And we have 144.390, not 395, we have 390, 391. And then we have 6.4 watts. Okay, let's write it down, let's write it down. Um, so ignore this. I, I did it once before off camera to make sure I knew what I was doing. Uh, so that was, uh, let's do it again. 144, 144.390 megahertz. And it said 6.4 watts. 6.4 watts. Okay, that's great. So uh, it's off, off in megahertz. Let's see if it's off in watts or not. Okay, so we can measure watts in a couple of ways. Okay, so the first way we're going to measure watts is with a spectrum analyzer. Not the greatest thing to be measuring watts in, but it, it'll give us a ballpark. Um, it, it will be good though for measuring the frequency so we can see that we're, if we're on frequency or not. So we cannot hook up the radio to the spectrum analyzer. We must put in a, a pad, right? So we're putting in a 30 dB attenuator. So we have a 30 dB 30 dB of attenuation, and let's see, let's in an adapter, we can go ahead and use this uh, for female to female adapter. Okay, that's tight, that's tight, that's tight. And this is the spectrum analyzer, so we'll put that here, we'll run it into the spectrum analyzer. Okay, so let's go over to the spectrum analyzer. And sorry, it's a little crooked. So let's transmit. And we are transmitting. So let's do a frequency of uh, 144.395 megahertz. Whoa, my spectrum analyzer just went wacko. Wow, what was that? <laughs> okay, frequency one. 44.395. Did I find the magic number? Megahertz. No, I don't know. <laughs> and then we'll do a span of one megahertz. And there's nothing there. Let's transmit. Yep, there we are right in the middle. So let's change the amplitude reference level to plus 10 dBm. And let's transmit again. And you see we're just below minus 10, plus 10 dBm. 
and we are spot on frequency. So yes, we are exactly on, exactly on frequency. And let's go ahead and uh, do a hold. Let's see, how do I do a hold? I don't know the holds very often here. True display, hold, uh, there it is, display hold. All right, so we can hold it. Uh oh, why didn't I hold it? Display, hold. Huh, okay, maybe that's not the way to do it. Trace, max hold. All right, that's another way to do it. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, then we can make some measurements here. We can do a peak search. We, okay, so let's write this down. Our peak is at uh, plus 6.72 dBm. Plus 6.72 dBm. And our frequency is at 144.395. So perfect, perfect frequency. And we have now have a power measurement. All right. So let's convert this to watts. Okay, so. In order to convert from watts, we need to add the 30 dB pad. So this is actually plus 36.72 dBm, okay? Which is 36720, uh, no, that's not, I, I'm doing it the wrong way. Okay, so in order to convert this, we'll do plus 36.72, we'll divide it by 10, and then we're gonna raise this to the 10, okay? And that will give us, that will give us uh, milliwatts. So, uh, 36.72 divided by 10, raised to the 10 is 4.7 watts. Okay, so this measures 6.4 watts, this is measuring 4.7 watts. Oh, wow, that's a big difference. <laughs> that is a very, very big difference. So let's, let's use a, a good power meter. So I have my, I have my uh, WaveTech power meter. Let's, uh, let's hook it up in circuit and see, see what it measures. It also needs a 30 dB pad in front of it, okay. And it's, this is going to be off camera, but I'll just read the number. Uh, it's over in my rack. Uh, let's see, push the button. 7.25. Okay. Plus 7.25 dBm. Okay, that's what... Uh, that's what the power meter's reading. So let's uh, let's convert that. All right, move the camera down a bit. So once again, that's plus 37.25. And if we take 37.25, divide that by 10 and raise that to the 10, we get 5.3 watts. So who's right? We have 4.3 watts, 5.3 watts, 4.7 watts and 6.4 watts. So, yeah, who's right? Who do you believe? I kind of believe this one. I kind of believe my old power meter, but um, like I said, spectrum analyzers aren't the greatest thing to be measuring watts with. Um, let's make that let's make that measurement again, just to see if things have heated up or something. Let me move this one. And let's go ahead and remove this uh, remove this cable just in case. We'll go ahead and put in a uh, put in a little female female adapter and do it that way instead. That heat sink's getting a little warm. And all right. And then let's do a trace clear. And then we'll do a max hold. And we are measuring 6.74. Same thing, 6.74. So, uh, yeah. So the spectrum analyzer is measuring a little bit low. A uh, power meter is measuring a little bit high. These two, and then the, uh, 
the new machine is quite a bit high, right? So, um, yeah, so we need to figure this out. Now, there is a calibration for this. So I don't know what they guarantee when it's not calibrated. Um, so let's take a look at uh, the manual, the manual for this thing. Here, let me change the camera a bit. Okay, so this is the user manual. And you can see that it, ha <laughs> it has a space here for you to do your own calibration over different, over different megahertzes and different watts and stuff. So it's, it, it is not a great, a great tool, but let's see here. Let's, um, it says uh, frequency range, one megahertz to 2.4 gigahertz. Although it doesn't measure power above 500 megahertz. Uh, I read that somewhere, so it only measures frequency. Uh, power range is 0.1 watts to 50 watts. Impedance 50 ohms, accuracy 10%. When the frequency is, yeah, so 10%. So are we within 10%? Uh, if it's 5.3 is the right number, let's get out a calculator. Where's my calculator? I just, had it in my hand. Don't you hate that? Oh, here it is. Uh -oh. Okay, so if we have uh, 6.4 and it really is 5.3, that's 1.1 difference, and then 5.3 divide, that's 20%. Uh, so it's out of spec. <laughs> out of spec. Um, so, uh, let's go back to the, let's go back to the manual. Where was it? Here. Uh, 10%. Uh, okay. And then it tells you actually how to use it. But then it goes into here, user mode. Now the user mode is very interesting. So, um, I'll put in a picture here, uh, showing you the inside of this thing. Now you take the four screws off the bottom and then you have to kind of use a spudger and open it up. But um, there's actually four buttons inside. So there's only one of the buttons is connected to the outside world, but there's three other buttons. So there's buttons, what they label here, buttons A, B, C, and D. So the D button is what the one that you have control over, but the A, B, and C buttons are there for calibration. Uh, press the A button, then press the D button to power and power on. Loosen the D button and then loosen the A button to user mode. The screen shows 0.0, .0 megahertz. Now the B button for plus button and the minus button for frequency calibration. Ah, so you can calibrate the frequency. Enter a frequency volume. <laughs> press the A button. Now just states the power checking under blah, 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 blah. Mm. Okay, so if we have a radio, all right. So it tells you how to how to put in frequency calibration. Um, then prepare, make sure it's well connected. Storage unit to save the device, push the, push the talk and press the A button. The screen shows asterisk. After the mark disappearing, loosen the PTT. Now the screen shows zero RF. Uh, states for button plus. So I guess, you, I guess you put in zero. I guess, I guess you can adjust to zero. And then uh, press the B button in case you want to reset the device. Uh, we're starting to enter the volume there. Anyway, so I think the thing to do is to figure out how to calibrate this thing and calibrate it. So that's that's kind of that's kind of unfortunate because most people are not going to be able to calibrate this thing. Um, yeah, most people are not going to be able to calibrate. But um, it's still useful, even if it's 20% off. It still lets you know that your transmitter is transmitting power. Maybe it's not giving out an exact number, but it's giving you the transmitted power. Um, and it does have an ability to calibrate, which is um, not, very, not very nice. They don't calibrate it at the factory, but um, yeah. So let me... Um, stop this video here 
and then uh, I will see if I can figure out if you can calibrate this thing or not and we'll try to get it measuring better and then see how it does uh, but I would say right now I would probably I would probably avoid this thing it wasn't cheap um, it wasn't terribly expensive but it definitely it wasn't cheap and uh, yeah I think your money's probably better spent on something else and I'm gonna try to do my own uh, power meter so uh, I think it's gonna be better than this one okay well I tried deciphering the uh, instructions here and failed. And then I went online and somebody had translated them into true English. And so I followed their procedure and failed. <laughs> so I just couldn't, I could not get this thing to calibrate. I, I don't know if it's the frequencies that I'm using uh, or the power levels and stuff. It, I don't know. Maybe I needed, it seems as though you need to calibrate this thing at 5 watts, 10 watts, 20 watts, 40 watts, 50 watts, that kind of thing at particular frequencies. And then you type in the frequency, you type in the power, and then it remembers that. And I don't know. I could not get it to work. So maybe your luck is better than mine. But right now I have to give this thing a thumbs down. Um, I just can't get it to go. And I think it's a bit too uh, off in power. To, to be all that useful. 20% um, seems too high. Um, maybe it's better in the 30 watt range. I mean, maybe it's pro pro problematic in the 5 watt range, but I don't know. I think a lot of these people are going to want to use them on HTs and stuff. So, oh well. Sorry. <laughs>